Well, hello everyone. My name is Sean Davis. I'm a student here. I'm going to be a junior at UT. And uh, my uh, mentor is Dr. Jacques Kumar. And my project this summer was over the simulating diffusion annihilation reaction, specifically anomalous diffusion. This is just a brief overview of what I'm going to talk about. And the first question is, what is diffusion? Well, it is technically defined as the thermal motion of particles above absolute zero. And this motion is random and is highly affected by the medium or surface that these particles are diffusing through or on. And uh, what is a diffusion annihilation reaction? Um, I'm specifically working with uh, reactions that are defined as A plus A goes to zero. But um, these examples are A plus B goes to zero, but they still fall under diffusion annihilation reactions, um, such as you know, particle antiparticle annihilation and electron hole recombination in uh, semiconductors. Um, and subdiffusion is defined as uh, when a particle has to uh, diffuse through a disordered medium or a medium that includes uh, sites that made it, make it wait, such as trapping sites. And the waiting times that these uh, armors have to wait um, are defined by a power law distribution. And this, di this distribution is, goes as a tau to the minus one minus uh, mu prime. And as you can see, as mu prime is less than one, is defined as subdiffusion. And anything that um, mu prime is greater than one is ordinary diffusion, which won't have these waiting times. And mu prime equals one is actually a, a critical value, which causes the uh, average tau, the integral, to diverge. So we have to um, go through some special techniques to simulate mu equals one. And the generation of these waiting times, the uh, tau goes as r to the minus one over mu prime, r being a random number from zero to one, which gives us these, uh, this is a random number generator to give us these random times in our simulation. And the theory of this is that, um, that my professor gave me, is that the mean square displacement of these monomers goes as tau to the mu, with again mu less than one being subdiffusion specifically. And the um, density n1 going as tau to the minus alpha, alpha being the exponent that we're trying to fit our data on and alpha going as a mu d over two, with the d being the dimension. We specifically worked with one dimension and two dimensions. Now my simulation, at the very beginning, it seeded the system with monomers and gave them all random numbers generated by the um, random number generator. And um, we determined which uh, monomer had the lowest waiting time and had that choose a random direction to move. And if it landed on another monomer, it annihilated both of them. If it didn't, it just went back through the system and chose the uh, monomer with the lowest waiting time to pick a random direction again. And these are the results for um, my uh, simulation in one dimension. The lattice size is about one million sites. And uh, as you can see, there's a mu, there's a mu prime equals one here. Um, but it kind of underrepresented the data because that again was the critical value and it causes the uh, integral of the average of tau to diverge. So we used a mu prime equals 10,000, which kind of forces the, uh, the parallel distribution to simulate um, regular diffusion. Remember, if um, mu prime is greater than one, it's regular diffusion. So it just simulates regular diffusion better when we get a, a better fit for alpha. Because um, this point that's under one is actually the mu prime equals 10k, so it fits a lot better than the mu prime equals one, which would be like down here though. So um, I have a, a bunch of different values from mu, and they all seem to fit the uh, the alpha um, the theory pretty well. And the two the two dimensional case had some issues because the code initially would search through a square lattice. The times were were kept on a square lattice. The waiting times. And so the time it would take to run these simulations would exceed like, you know, six, seven hours. And that's just much too long because we needed bigger systems um, to get better statistics for two dimensions. Um, one million sites wasn't really cutting it. So we introduced something called the binary heap. And it is a uh, binary tree way of keeping data. Um, specifically, we use the min heap. And so it goes that it specifically keeps the um, the root or the very top value of the tree to be the lowest value. And it makes sure that the, the children of leaves of these tree are always less than its parent. And so that gave us a factor of about 180. It, for example, I, I ran a, uh, one of my systems that was um, a million sites. 
uh, just the initial initial run to test the, the heat, the speed. And it went from three hours to one minute, so it really gave us like a lot of time on these runs. And uh, these are results of a two-dimensional run on a mu equals 0.8. As you can see, I increased the lattice size to um, 3,000 3, by 3,000 instead of 1,000 by 1,000. Um, specifically, two dimensions is also a critical dimension for diffusion. So this, uh, this red line right here is the normal, just the data graph, just by itself. And instead of n1 going as t to the minus alpha, it technically goes as n1 log t, t to the minus alpha, just because two dimension is the critical dimension for diffusion. And so we have to introduce this uh, kind of log correction where we divide the, um, the density by log t to make up for that correction. And it, it fits, it starts fitting the, um, the data much better. And we, we fit the asymptotic value of the data. So we try to wait until this curvature stops, because this is just the initial, uh, the system initializing. And so we fit just this asymptotic value. And as you can see, the, the estimated value is 0.8, and we got really close to it for mu equals 0.8, because mu d over 2, the dimension equals 2, so it cancels out the half. And so we just get um, the mu. And uh, this is mu equals 0.5. And as you can see, the, with the log correction, it fits the data very well. And uh, this is mu equals 0.25, so you it fits the data much better with the correction for the log. And this is what I was talking about with um, mu equals 1 versus mu prime equals 10k. Um, the mu equals 1 really underestimates the, uh, the value of alpha, just because the, um, the average tau the interval really diverges when you use one. So we use 10k to um, simulate these uh, very small distribution waiting times to get normal diffusion. And in conclusion, the, the theory um, holds for 1D annihilation diffusion. And with the log correction, it holds for 2D annihilation diffusion. And in the future, um, we're going to be working with uh, super diffusion annihilation, which is um, U equals 2. And uh, possible publication of this information that it uh, agrees with the theory. We might do 3D annihilation diffusion, and we might work with those examples or something like the examples where a plus b goes to zero instead of a plus a goes to zero. <coughs> and I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Marr and the National Physics Foundation for um, allowing me to research this, and Dr. Irving for all his help. He helped me set up my computer and everything. Thank you guys so much. So I just have a comment, which, um, which is this hasn't been studied before, and there is no theory for this, but this is a theory that we developed. So yes, we're, we're essentially testing this theory, right? Yes, sir. And we found a lot of correction. And that's also a conjecture, mm -hmm. uh, which we don't know how to, we can't do exactly, but it's a conjecture that seems to work. It says that for these uh, critical demands and power applications, what is really by the uh, critical demand of diffusion? How is you know, diffusion as a critical demand? Um, there were papers published in the past that it said that in two dimensions there was a correction. We needed, well, that was the conjecture mm -hmm. he was talking about. That but the correction does not say it's uh, critical demand, right? So what is, the, what is critical in, the, in, in that sense? Um, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I mean, for many problems, uh, two dimensions is the critical dimension. For many problems involving diffusion, two dimensions is the critical dimensions, and one expects a lot of different directions. And so, for example, in the problem of uh, some other uh, island, <coughs> it's known that there are a lot of different directions. In 2D, they don't exist. In 3D, they're, they're 1D. Is it only by the critical dimensions? Low correction? Yeah, because because d equals two is the critical dimension, you have this log in the correct. What happens if you have a non-integer dimension? <laughs> well, you you could study that by doing like a diffusion on a fractal or something like that. And again, nobody studied subdiffusion before, but people have studied rate of diffusion on a fractal. Um, that's also maybe another way to study subdiffusion. All right, let's thank Sean again.